we spend billions locking up persistent offenders who had behavior problems when they were small. If they and their parents had help early enough, the cycle of exclusion, isolation, and trouble could be broken, sparing endless pain and expense later on. Children out of control are every parent and teacher's nightmare. Hard-pressed schools can no longer contain them. As exclusions soar, restless children are left at home or at risk on the streets. Exclusions now start at five or even younger. This labels children as troublemakers and blights their childhood and later life. There are times when we need to remove children, but we need to look at what we're removing them to. I think we then have to ask ourselves what's going to happen to those children once they are excluded. And I think, and I've thought about this quite a lot, I think for society it means you're going to have a significant number of very unhappy, violent people. We've all seen children like Dean, causing trouble, embarrassing his family. Aged four, what is Dean's future, starting school and after? We have the luxury to shake our heads, blame the parents and turn away. But it's not just other people's problem. I honestly believed when such a, my oldest was a baby that she wouldn't do anything naughty or difficult. She was going to stay placid and uh, had a very unrealistic expectation. So when she lay on her back in the middle of mother, mother care, sort of screaming and shouting, I want to be good, I want to be good, and yet failing sort of miserably. And I realised I was one of those mums that I thought, ha, it'll never happen to me, you know? You want to believe it's out there, you don't want to believe it's here. And the reality is, it can be anywhere. At home on the outskirts of Swindon, Rachel faces the daily ordeal of getting her three children ready to go out. Her two sons, six-year-old Duane and four-year-old Dean, are far more awkward than her one-year-old daughter, Becky. Stop wiping your nose out. Go get some tissue. No! Now, you can imagine what this is like in the morning, just trying to get them all ready so I can be out of the house. Mom. See, with Dean... <laughs> He's not, you can see, obviously, he's not struggling. His problem is he's whining oh and he's constant moaning Dad. about everything. See, Dwayne, I used to have to Mom, I my pin him down to put anything on him because he would fight me. Mom, I want my no, let's wash your face. Get this washed. Mom, I stop making a fuss then. Get your foot out the door. We're going out. Right, I'm just going to get my purse and that. Mums like Rachel, with several strong-willed children, like Dean and his older brother Dwayne, have an extra dilemma. Every occasion can be a source of trouble. Even if one child behaves well, the other can start things going. Leave them alone. I eat the feet now. Hey, hey, hey! Oh my god, here they go. Dwayne! Dwayne! They think they're getting away with it, but they won't. Over time, the relentless effort to keep the peace drives even patient mothers like Rachel to drastic action that may make matters worse. I'm trying to drive the car. Now sit up. Another one. It's not fair on Becky because she is a good girl. She's really sort of contented in herself, but she's taking it all in all the time. You can see her watching and you know observing what they're doing. And she's just gonna if something don't change, there's just gonna be another one like it. I don't think I'll be able to manage another one. Because they drive me mad. Many children are restless, hyperactive, aggressive, 
or have other learning or behavior problems likely to cause trouble at school. Few have help nearby. But Wiltshire parents with infants at risk of exclusion can refer them for treatment on the 10-week course at Marlborough House in Swindon. Part of the NHS, it offers a structured program one day a week for both parents and children that shamefully appears unique in England and Wales. Each child has very different problems. Joseph is there because he has trouble in groups. His mother fears he won't cope with large classes at school. I was very tired, and when you're very tired, it's difficult to be positive, and, you know, things escalate. And so I just needed to talk to somebody who wasn't a relative, wasn't somebody in the village, or... Um, and then it sort of snowballed, and we thought, what have we got ourselves into? And we were very concerned that... Um, that we were labelling Jo. And you feel like you failed, don't you? Especially if you're an infant teacher, <laughs> you feel like you failed. Charlotte lives 50 miles away on an army base. She's already been excluded from playgroup for aggression towards other children. My cousin keeps telling me if I jump on Charlotte hard enough, every time she does something, she'll start doing it. I've tried that. I've tried ignoring her, but she's in my face all the time she's there and she's shouting at you. I've tried every single thing, I'm bribing her, sending her to bed, leaving her in a room all day, taking her toys away, throwing them in the bed, everything, nothing works. <laughs> Twins David and Liam, age six, have language and behaviour problems. They go to school on condition they attend the unit one day a week. They don't understand a great deal of what he said. You can ask them something and they just don't understand it. It's a vocabulary language type thing. They were labelled as naughty for quite a while and it wasn't until they started going to school that they realised they weren't naughty naughty. It's just they didn't quite understand what was going on. But at home they're fine. At home they know the ground rules, they know what's expected of them. But when you take them out, things change and they just don't know what to do. They, don't, they can't cope. They were expelled from a playgroup because they were said that they were too naughty. I heard that. But, you know, she's four, year, yeah. four, four years old, she's been expelled from the playgroup. Is this going to be the pattern of her life? You know, is she going to be expelled from every school she goes to? You know? So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happens here in the group today. <laughs> The work is based on positive principles, designed to teach children what to do rather than what not to do. Good behaviour gets positive rewards like praise and tokens. Bad behaviour is ignored or contained by what they call physical prompts. Coming here is going to be about you thinking to yourself, how did I respond in a certain situation? And what message am I giving my child? So it'll be as much about analysing your behaviour as your child's behaviour. Most of all, we want to shift the label naughty that it's got itself firmly attached to your children. We don't want them to go through their lives with that label naughty. We don't want you to go through your life with the label of a bad mother. That's not a pleasant situation for either of you. And, and babies don't exactly come with instructions, do they? I mean, most things do. You get a, you get a washing machine, it's got a booklet, hasn't it? It says, you know, what is what you do, and this is what you do, something goes wrong, but babies don't. Oh, wasn't that a big loud thank you? The long day is tightly structured to build confidence and develop skills needed in real school. Physical coordination, mental concentration, the ability to follow instructions, complete tasks, and work with other children. Adam's thinking just where to put his pot, look. You can stand up and choose your pot now. Oh, did you pick that one? Oh, Jill's picked it up. Thank you. Your label on. Thank you. You have to remember to say thank you too. Well done, Sam. Within the tight structure, children are encouraged to make choices, like jam or marmite. Everybody needs to be watching. Well done, David. Oh, God, it's very crazy. important that we think about what we do with jam and marmite. So everybody needs to look at Karen. By midday, ten children deemed too awkward or difficult to contain in playgroup or school sit quietly together with their hands in their laps, some for the first time in their lives. They only met two hours ago. We praise the children constantly whenever they do anything good. Each time they've done anything we've asked them to do, we've given them a token. Well done, Robert. Papa, I give you a token for saying please and thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, Joseph. You're thinking. Good boy. Well done, my hand and my lap. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a shame. We need to wait for Joseph to be ready to say thank you. I'm just going to get some yeah, more right, juice. Yeah, yeah. If a child does something that we want them to do, we lavish praise and attention on that child, which is where the tokens are coming in. So what a child learns is that if they're behaving appropriately, they will get lots of adult attention. On the other hand, if a child isn't behaving appropriately, we'll try and handle the situation with as minimum fuss as possible. Can I just clear up on our client yes, she gone restraining the kids? I mean, we don't seem to have any violence. No, you know, no. If you do have one that's gathered, would you take them out of the uh, group? Or? Basically, we, we will contain them within the group. We use a timeout chair where we will take a child. If a child lashes out at another child, we will take them to timeout and we will help them to sit on timeout. When you sit at the table, you sit with your hands in your lap and you keep your feet still. I can't have it. We will hold a child where they're supposed to be. So if a child needs to be playing on the mat, we will sit with them, keeping them on the mat. The way that we use physical prompts, the way that we restrain the children, is to be as gentle as possible with them. Well done, Joseph. You're sitting still and quiet now. You can go back to the table. So we're only holding them with the force that it needs to contain them. If a child's really struggling, obviously we need to grip on tight to them. But the minute they begin to relax, the minute we begin to relax, and very quickly they realise that that's where they're going to be staying, so they might as well play with the toys rather than sit there fussing about You've never it. never had to take a child out of it? No. Scott, you can listen to me. Ah. Give your tokens. Thank you. That's a lot, Robert. Yeah. Let's tick some off. Right. Well done. We fall into a trap as parents. Children's <coughs> naughty behaviour is very easy to notice. We can't help but notice it. What tends to happen is we give children attention when they're being naughty. We, we don't mean to do that, but it's very difficult to do other than that. So quite often when children are being good, we'll rush away and be busy, and yet when they're being naughty, we'll reappear. Now for a child, any attention is better than no attention at all. So in some ways they actually learn to be naughty in order to get our attention. And there's not one single parent out there who is thinking, I think I'll teach my child to be naughty today. <laughs> and yet, lots of us are actually falling into that trap with, without realising it. Each group activity looks simple but works on many levels. Throwing to a child he names helps David's social and physical skills. The group activities are punctuated by quiet times in which children must settle down and learn the vital lesson, how to respect each other's space. By the end of the day, the parents' group gather behind a one-way mirror as the children hear accounts of their progress and their tokens are counted. Some parents find it hard to believe their problem child could behave so well. They're preparing to count the tokens now. Now, obviously, the whole routine is very new to the children and it's been a long, hard day. So actually sitting still and watching tokens being counted is going to be quite difficult. The staff are working quite hard to physically <laughs> prompt the children to face in this direction. It's always children that are sitting still and quietly that are chosen. Those children that aren't managing easily to sit still are being helped at the moment, obviously. She's actually missed Charlotte out because Charlotte isn't able to sit still at the moment. You will see the changes each week. They will get more used to this. Let's give David a big clap. Well done, Sometimes children find it very difficult to accept praise. It's not always easy for a child to accept praise, particularly if they're stuck with the label of the naughty one or the difficult one. If they've overheard that being said about them, sometimes they don't really believe that you mean it when you praise them. So you might have quite a lot to overcome. Well done. Should we tell them about all the good things you've been doing? I love my fishy summer quiz.
Right to the end of the day, group rules are enforced step by step for as long as it takes. Before leaving, Joseph must do up his coat. When we've got a chance to make an advice, rather than focus on the fuss, we'll talk about the things that they are doing well. So Pauline will be saying things to him like, um, gosh, well done, the coat's nearly done up. She won't be talking to him about the fuss, she'll be talking to him about the things that mm. he is managing. And she'll be talking to him about the fact that you're waiting and that it's nearly time to go mm. home. So she'll be reassuring him. It's ever so easy to get focusing on the behaviour. And it would be very easy to start saying, oh gosh, for goodness sake, why won't you stop fussing? Let's get your coat up and actually focus on the fuss. Oh, well done. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. I think what distressed me is that you can't pinpoint why Jai is like he is. If there was a uh, some great upset, some uh, great upheaval, um, some of the people have got great traumas going on in their lives, and you can see why their children are, uh, are upset. Joe hasn't got any of those excuses. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he does not like having his face washed. <laughs> At home, preparing for the next session, Rachel tries to follow the group instruction to ignore Dean's bad behaviour, but he doesn't make it easy. Well, your face is on, isn't it? Uh, you mean you want your dirty face on? Yeah. Why are you not? Because you had it was all dirty. Open it here. Open it here, Mum. Dean, shut up now, because you're getting on my nerves. Open here. Shut up. Let <laughs> me just. I don't know what you're on about. Hold on, let's see what Becky's doing in videos. Put your lunchbox away. Joe was irritable from the start, poor lamb. But he was born with a tumour in his mouth, so he had a very difficult start. So he had surgery when he was five weeks old, and it was benign tumour, thank goodness. But then he had further surgery at a year. So if you're looking for something to blame, well, I really think that Joe probably would have been a bit of a difficult character anyway. Bless him. Each week, a parent observes behind the one-way mirror to see their child's behaviour more objectively. Joe's dad, Adam, a busy executive, has come to learn what the unit hopes to achieve with his son. Because an instruction has been given, uh, and the way it was given takes away any option to not do it, mm -hmm. the children will be helped. And obviously, I don't think Joseph particularly wants to do movement today, um, so he'll be helped to do that. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. If ever you see something that you're not happy about, please say. Um, we can either explain why we're doing it or, or change, because obviously the bottom line is Joseph is your child, and you remain in control. And this is all about group work. It's um, Some children find it quite hard to actually work in a group closely with others, so it's it's a really good thing to skill to learn. And I think Joseph, in his dislike of, of joining groups, would be quite valuable. Mm. First session, I was saying, Joe doesn't need to be here. He hasn't, you know, hearing the other mums saying some of the problems that they'd had, and I think, Joe hasn't done any of those things. He hasn't got any problems. When I saw him in the group, I was very distressed because he finds it very difficult, and I've not seen him like that before. But he obviously does find it very difficult in groups, and he finds it hard to join in. That was a surprise, <laughs> owned a whole can of worms, really. 
so I'd rather we found out before school. So what's happening is nobody is actually taking any notice of, of Joseph not taking mm. part. Mm. And yet he's looking for somebody to, yes. to tell him that you have to take part. He's desperately seeking some eye contact, isn't he? So mm. There is a difference in, in what we're seeing now, which is almost like a want to, but I can't, mm. yeah. than at the beginning, which is, I, I don't want to, so I'm not. Mm. How do you feel about this? Mm, it's sad, isn't it? Well, yeah, I'm sure it would be beneficial. But I can see the, the tactics you're using. Yeah. Seems very sensible. Yeah. Adam was concerned that putting Joe in that situation, which he's not in usually, I mean, playgroup's more relaxed. He's only four and a half. You know, had we precipitated the behaviour to some extent, just try and avoid situations. They deliberately build into the day at the group so that the children learn strategies to cope with it. But he, he's always been very frightened of parties new things. He, he literally sort of goes like he's in, in shock. His face goes green and he trembles and so I've avoided taking him to parties. I mean, we go for the first five minutes and then come home. And I guess we've got to start putting him in situations that he can't keep avoiding them. Joseph, who's going to be your partner? He's got to get used to these things. Not that he's got to grow up suddenly, you know, and he's entitled to not like going to parties. He wouldn't be the only person in the world that didn't like it. But you know, he's got to be able to cope with, with it. Excuse me, Adam, Joseph would really like you to be his partner. Would you like to be Joseph's partner? Yes. There. Sit down then. Back to back. Well done. Right. Yeah. That's it. We made it at last. <laughs> but that's OK, isn't mm. it? I mean, what hopefully Joseph will learn eventually, and children don't learn at the outset. You know, you have to do things time and time and time again for the mm. message to get home. Mm. It's, it's much better to join in and to have some fun. And it is fun. This is very non-threatening. Mm. Shall have but a penny a day because he can't. Come on, Dean, share the ball with Dwayne. No, I'm not Dwayne. Uh... Becky wants you to go down. Becky, push him down. If you're not going to play with the ball, let me no! share it. As often happens, Dean's progress in learning to share in the group is slow to show itself at home. Sometimes once is enough to have taught the child a very, very important message because the next time what they can think is maybe I'm not making quite enough fuss. Last time I made some fuss and I managed to get the sweets. This time I'm making some fuss, I'm not getting the sweets. What shall I do? I'll just make more fuss. <laughs> so we can inadvertently teach our children to do things that we don't want to. And that's happening everywhere, all over the whole of Swindon, all over the whole of England. And nobody ever wants to teach their child how to be naughty, but most of us manage it in one situation or another. In the week between sessions, Rachel tries to practice what she's learned about not giving in. She's asked Dean to put his bowl in the sink. The simplest little thing, no. Well, I'm not doing it. Oh, Come on, just put it in the sink, then that'll be okay. No, normally, for a quiet life, I would put it in there myself. I do ask him to do it. But by now, I would have put it in there just to shut him up. So, do you want me to just show you? No, it won't hurt you to do it. Done that, you can go watch the telly now. Cups. Right, you 
to get out of the bath now. <laughs> In the role play of points of difficulty, parents are taught to avoid bribes if their child obeys. Treats should come when they comply. When you've gone into your bedroom, then we'll have our two stories. Mm. Oh, good, you're getting out of the bath. Well done, I put a token in here, put straight away. Brilliant. Now get the towel. We need to get the towel. <laughs> For children with behavior problems, Constant praise means outbursts are surprisingly rare. David's left the circle to get his jumper. <laughs> Failure to grasp the rules has already earned him a bad reputation at school. There are people out there that will say things to your children that will make them feel bad about themselves. Yeah, we've had that. Yeah. David was called stupid by some of the girls in his class at school, mm. and I didn't understand for quite a while what was going on, but he suddenly did not want to go to school anymore, and he got quite upset crying, I always had to drag him into the class. And then it took me a while, because he can't talk well, but he, he did say, you know, they so and so and so, so they've been calling me stupid. People think these children are stupid, mm. but they're not stupid, they're a lot cleverer than us, that's why they're here. <laughs> yeah. It's true though, isn't it? They were as clever as was, they wouldn't have been ruling as the way yeah. they were. If they, if they were stupid, point, then yeah. they couldn't twist us around their little fingers, could they? Well done, Sam. <laughs> Two more moments. Along with preschool tasks like reading stories, making music and art, the training also focuses on ordinary tasks, which can set the whole relationship between a child and his parents or teachers. Miss what would happen in school, you see. He'd be given instruction and be left. Right. So Sam's going to test that now to see what's going to happen. She may not look as though she's watching him and seeing what's going on, but uh, she's aware. Yes. I'm aware of that bolt. And you're water. aware of that bolt <laughs> before you're raising for it to go, aren't you? <laughs> yes. It wouldn't be the first, be the first time no. it's actually no. happened. <laughs> what would happen, though, is Joseph would have to clear it up. Mm. He's not being drawn into, he's negotiating with him. That, right. Come on, Joseph, this mm. is what you should be doing. No, I'm not. Yes, I yeah. guess you are. Which I think happens at home sometimes, doesn't Definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. 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 Far too much negotiation, I'm sure. When Joseph's finished his washing up, he will be able to go out and play. But if you look at the difficulties that are arising with these children here now, you yeah. try and imagine what they would be like in a class of 32, when there's only, yeah, well, there's, there's only one teacher and perhaps one assistant. Mm. At the moment, you've got four staff in there and, and two mums, so that's actually mm. quite a high ratio. Mm. And where the schools are under pressure now to you know, reach their targets, they haven't got time to chase these children around the classroom. And so a lot of the children are being withdrawn from the, the classroom situation. Yeah. What we're trying to do is to help Joseph to think this through, that, you know, what is it I should be doing? Mm. Once you get into the negotiations, you get lost from that. And she's not giving eye contact. And she's not giving the eye no. contact, which is really important. There's a kick of Sam there. Did you see that? You actually kicked oh, Sam? Right. Yes. This is something that Joseph does find very difficult. He's got a long list of tactics that he draws on to mm. get out of doing things. Like right now, you know, he's blowing his nose and he's rubbing it all over Sam. But it's something that, mm. you know, we don't, we don't like. Mm. Like the crying, like the temper mm. tantrums. Mm. I want to go to the toilet, I'm going to wet myself, I'm going to be mm. sick, all those sort of mm. things that he comes out with. But he's not going to get out of it by doing that. Well done, I'm going to give you another toke and you're working really hard there. I've seen some of these tactics at home by Joe as well. Have you? Yeah. yeah. And ignoring the slamming mm. down. Yes. Again, at home, you, we probably would get drawn Yeah, into. you tend to pick up on the yes. things, yeah. Home and 
he was having to do something that he didn't want to and he mm. wanted to go out, what would you do? We'd do it with him, I expect. So I wouldn't just let him do it entirely by himself. Mm. And then he'd end up going up into something else and we'd end up finishing it. Right. <laughs> That's what actually happened. Mm. So what, what are the messages that you're actually giving Joseph? That if he mm. perhaps if he kicks up long enough that you'll do it for him or...? I guess so, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> If you look at the other children, though, they're actually taking their clues from, from the adults, then, mm -hmm. because the adults are not making a fuss mm -hmm. um, about Joseph, and that's something for you to remember at home with, with your other one. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not making a fuss, then the, the younger one will actually take their clues from you. Mm -hmm. What we want to try and do is to teach them to actually keep focused on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you consider all the children here have got very short attention spans, mm -hmm. um, they're actually doing very, very well. Yeah, they yeah. are. What do you feel like doing at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to get in there and stop it, or what? <laughs> yes, really, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Oh, will you stop fussing? Oh, for goodness sake, you know, please, please do this. But the fact he was getting lots and lots of praise when he did manage to do a cup, even when it was slammed down on the table. Yeah, it's, it's just obviously distressing watching him yeah. because, uh, because he was having a, 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 you know, a, a cry there. Yeah, but I really wanted him to have a go at finishing that off by himself. And I think that if that ever got re repeated, he would start doing it on his own a lot quicker. He's gone from getting lots and lots of physical prompts, verbal prompts, to those being decreased, managing to do it all by himself. But he's not a, he's not a confident little boy, and that actually stops him from doing a lot of these tasks. Being bright doesn't necessarily mean to say that you're going to be confident. Mm -hmm. Anxiety can get in the way, your own expectations can get in the way. The fear of not being able to complete a task, or knowing exactly what's expected of you. And he's actually doing really well there now. And Karen, in fact, has backed off slightly. You know, he, got, he had lots of praise to start with. He's not even looking for it now. And despite it being a really boring job, he's actually doing it, doing it well. When enforcing the rules, staff avoid looking directly at the children to make clear that instructions must be followed without discussion. But they see making eye contact as a vital positive tool in holding the children's attention. It really is essential that you make a real effort to engage with your child. So it's actually about maybe crouching down to their level, because sometimes when we're talking from up there, we're not meeting their eyes. When we've, once we've crouched down, it's much easier to make some eye contact with them, to look at them and say, gosh, you've worked really hard at that. So you're moving close and you're making the eye contact immediately. Excuse me, Karen. I'm always really pleased with children when they work really hard at jobs they don't want to That's do. Right. And it was a very, it took a very long time, Joseph, but you didn't give up. You managed it. Well done. Yes, we see. Let's see what Mum and Dad have said. He's acting like he's shouting. Probably is. 
just like, please, though, it doesn't matter. Hey, Mom! The end of each session is a turning point. Volatile children like Dean have behaved well for more than five tiring hours. But can he sustain his progress outside, with Rachel, or with his friends on the street and his brother Dwayne, who may undermine his attempts at self-discipline? beginning what you're going to give him tokens for and that's perfectly okay to do that to actually say mummy's going to start or daddy's going to start using tokens at home we're going to be using tokens for and one of the things you could say is not making a fuss so in that situation if you saw a kick under the table before the other one had chance to kick back you could say well done dean you didn't make a fuss tell you what dean what i'm going to put a token in your pot right <laughs> do you know why do you know why because you're ignoring Dwayne and not taking any notice of the fuss he's making. Is that all right? Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was thinking, Rachel, I, I felt you were more positive a few weeks ago. I, mm. I think it's because I had a bad morning this morning. Yeah, you're, do you're looking much more stressed. Than, you're not your normal happy self here, are you? No. I, I, sometimes I think, is it Dean I stress with or is it Dwayne? I'm back to the situation again and I, I can't sit here and be quite as jolly as all. I'm going to cry right now. You, you do. You, you're actually very upset. Do you want a bit of time out of the group? Yeah. 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 It's Dwayne that he's... I can't stand him around me. He's driving me mad. After lunch, during quiet time, the children spend time alone on their mats. It shows the progress they have made, adapting to the unit's structured approach. After seven weeks, Joseph has relaxed into it. He finds it easier to be with other children, like David. Both boys can now be corrected without a drama. Crucially for school, they are learning how to sit quietly and how to wait their turn. For those children considered hyperactive or behaviorally disturbed, this is a major achievement. Without this help, they could go on to special schools or even be given drugs to manage them. Yet in two decades, this unit has rarely had to use medication to calm the children. Well 
As the next school term looms only a few months away, the group regime moves on to more challenging tasks. Within the greater freedom, the rules and boundaries are still maintained in a positive way. David's problem with painting is that he must wear a smock to protect his clothes. This battle of wills lasts a quarter of an hour. Such resistance would not win favor in school. But at the unit, he earns praise for settling down to the task at last. don't worry about taking him into public now, really. Sometimes, if I knew it was going to be a difficult situation, I would have avoided it. done him some good, yeah, he definitely has. Before he wouldn't let his dad do nothing. He wouldn't allow him to dress him, even bath him, take him to bed or nothing. He wouldn't let him do But he's changed in that way, hasn't he? He comes to me a lot more now. Never used to be like that, No. But he, um, how he's behaving in there, that's, uh, I could manage that. It's when the food goes flying and the, and the noise and the language comes out that... I don't like, but he has, he has done him some good. He's not perfect, mind you, but then what kid is? Dean Davis. Good boy. To last, the positive approach needs to be applied both by Dean's family and teachers. With large classes, this is not always easy. Now it's a big shout. Kathy from the unit sits in to see how Dean has changed. I had some of my staff say, you know, Helen, really, you know, he's so disruptive and, oh, God, it's Dean's time to come in today. Um, oh, dear, let's all, you know, get ourselves together ready for this. And we have continual meetings throughout the term, and Dean was on the agenda for at least two terms. He really did uh, cause disturbances within the group, and you have to be careful because it does rub off. But we've got over that, and of course, obviously, with the help he's been getting outside play school, Dean has has come on a treat. He's become very, very sensible of the fact that if you help, it's good fun. And of course, he starts in nursery school in September, and he's ready. I mean, he will be ready then. And we'll be sad to see him go, which I have to be honest to say that about nine months ago, I would never have thought I would be saying that now. <laughs> Joseph's behaviour has improved as well. As it has for the others in the group, this has changed the atmosphere at home. Andrew, hold on to the rope. I'm trying harder to have more fun with him. I've always, I've been aware for a while because I didn't give up work till he was three, but I've only got this two years before he started school. 
and when it didn't work out and it wasn't fun all the way and I didn't keep the house beautifully tidy and I wasn't making jam and all the things I thought I was going to do when I was at home, that was a great disappointment. And I went through a bit of a bad patch myself, uh, thinking, hang on, I'm not this super housewife that I, th I thought it was going to be so easy. Um, and now I'm really realising that I hang the house. I've only got five months left with Joe before he goes to school and make the most of it. I think, I think we laugh more than we did. But Joseph's entry to school is not straightforward. Ironically, the fact that he's been to the day unit has made the school more cautious. He will not attend full time until he shows he can cope with its demands. I don't know, you get very defensive. And you're saying, it isn't my fault. But you're bound to think really it is. Over the ten sessions, staff gradually withdraw from the children. At times on the last day, they leave the room altogether. This group has been one of the easier groups that we've had for a long, long time. We've had less acting out from some of these children. Uh, we've not had the severe temper tantrums that we had in the past that have lasted for an hour, two hours. Some of these children have responded just so quickly to, to the positive reinforcement. It can take six to nine weeks before we actually feel that we're actually getting anywhere. For this particular group, for whatever reason, I don't know, they've actually all responded really well. Oh, come back here, Sam. Sam, move back in. Because I'm just going to say how pleased I am with Sam, Sarah. Cause you're Sam really the unit's overall aim is to encourage the children's independence, to help them absorb the lessons they have learned there in order to manage themselves, as they must do to succeed in school. On the last day, Joe and Dean team up to control Sam's exuberance. So, excuse me, Dean, I wouldn't take any notice of Sam. You need to look this way, Dean. In the final parents' group, Mothers describe how much their children have achieved the changes they'd hoped for. What about you lot? Because you're the one that's had to put in all the hard work. How do you feel you've changed? I've come off I'm my antidepressants, sure Sam. Right, that's a good one. I've been off them about five weeks now. But now, I love praising her because, like, everybody turns round and looks at you as if to say, like, you batty old woman or whatever. Mm. <laughs> but I think to myself, well, at least I've got something to praise my child for. Yeah. Like, because all the other kids are running like absolute lunatics around the shop, and Charlotte's like walking around on sense of being as good as girls. And I'm like, well, my kids behaving. You know what I mean? You feel, more po you feel inside more positive about Charlotte. Yeah, now. I've got bags of confidence now when I'm dealing with that. Yeah. We've had them one day a week. It's you that's, that's made the changes. It's the effort that you put in at home. Because they wouldn't have changed. Just that, just that's what, with them one day a week, it would not have brought about the changes that you've listed up there. And that's your doing, not us. And you said, what do you hope for out of this 10 weeks? And I thought the, it was sort of asking for the moon, some of the things that we were, we're listing. Yeah, yeah. But actually, some of the changes have happened. Mm. I'm sold on it. Yes, <laughs> 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 <laughs>